Welcome to Faith Family Worship Center. We are so glad that you are here online with us here today. This is Mother's Day, a wonderful day that we have here to be able to celebrate all of our moms, stepmoms, grandmothers, great-grandmothers. We want to honor you here today. Now, if you're new to Faith Family Worship Center, please text NEW to FFWC to 77948. Let us know that you've been here. All we ask for is a name and an email, and you can leave your, leave your mobile phone number if you so desire. But we just want to send you an email to say thank you for being a part of today's service. And if you're one of our Faith Family uh, Worship Center regulars, whether you attend here at our physical campus or uh, digitally, please click share. And give away this link to people who need to hear about hope today. We're looking forward to them coming online with us and enjoying this time here together. Well, as I mentioned, today is Mother's Day. And if you are a mom and you're watching here in the Sunday 1030 a.m. service, we want you to comment that you're here. Let us know that you're here. Just say, I'm a mom, or I'm a grandmother, or whatever the case is. And if you're new to us, we don't, we, we've never contact, been in contact with you before, please make sure that you follow up with that text with new to FFWC. And the reason is, is that we are giving away a great big Mother's Day gift basket. And uh, we're going to have a drawing after the service is over. And we'll need to be able to contact you to let you know if we drew your name out of the hat. So uh, we want you to just go over there, comment, and say, I'm a mom, uh, whatever the case is, and we will be able to contact you afterwards. And I want to give a great big shout out to uh, the ones who donated this ba basket to us. We have been highlighting different uh, businesses here in our local community during this crisis, supporting them and helping them the best way that we can. And so we want to give a great big shout out to Muscle Mike Movers for do donating this to us. We thank them so much for being able to do that, and we highly recommend them to you. They attend church here, and they are a part of our faith family. So we thank you so much for being a part of what God is doing here today. Happy Mother's Day. We're going to talk about that here uh, a little bit more here in just a few moments. But at this time, I want you to, uh, if you've got your Bibles there, to go to Ephesians chapter 3, verse number 20. Ephesians 3.20, this has been a verse that we have been using for the last few weeks and uh, believing that God is going to do something great and awesome in our lives, even in the midst of everything that's been going on around us. Through supernatural miracles, Jesus reveals his compassion for us, his authority over everything, his power to be able to do, and his desire to see you and me accomplish infinitely more than we can ask or think. Whenever you, you think about what Jesus did, whenever he walked upon uh, the face of this earth, I'm sure that if you're like me, you, you, you say, wow, I mean, this was awesome. 
In Ephesians 3.20, it reads, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. Well, here's the deal. Miracles that Jesus did over 2,000 years ago are for today. That isn't to say that God is a spiritual credit card that you can get him to do whatever you want, whenever you want. It is to say that God will intercede on your behalf. But as Jesus taught in Matthew chapter number 6, we have to submit our lives and our will to him. He's taught us to pray. Your kingdom, the heavenly kingdom, come here on earth. Your kingdom come. Your will be done, not mine. And so when we discover that when we give our lives to him, he can do miracles in our lives and through our lives for other people whenever we desire to follow him above all and everything else. If you need a miracle today in your life, text pray for me to 77948. Just a little form and it goes directly to my cell phone. It goes directly to my email. I share it with a team of people who will pray for you. They believe in the promises of God. They believe what the Bible says, that by his stripes that he bore at the crucifixion, we will know healing, that he is our provider, that he will give wisdom and direction. They believe, and they will sincerely believe for you. We, we don't care how many requests that come in. We don't care where they're from. We just want to believe for you that God will do a miracle in your life here today. And that um, uh, number, by the way, is available to you 24-7. You can text a prayer request anytime, anywhere, any place, Anywhere in the world, you are able to do that. And we welcome you to help uh, let us be a ministry to you in that you can discover hope through prayer. So I want to take a few moments to pray. As we have come through this crisis, every week has brought something different, something new. And we are now, some are saying, we're coming on the backside of this. We're at the top of the curve. Lots of terminology being, being tossed around. Here's what I know. We're not out of the woods yet. And we still need God's help to see us through the coming weeks and months as we begin to emerge from this. Let's pray. And let's pray believing that God is going to do something great in your life, in this church, in your home in all of our hearts, that we're going to see a great revival of his presence and power in our lives in the coming weeks and months, in our neighborhoods, our communities, and in our world. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for what you've done and for your many blessings. I pray, God, that you will begin to pour out your spirit upon your people wherever they're at right now. If they're in their kitchens, their living rooms, if they're in their car driving, if they're at work, and, they're, and they just got the earbuds in and they hear me right now, I pray that all of us will take this moment, if we can, to bow our head, to say a prayer, to acknowledge the fact that you are our only hope. You are the one who answers prayers. So I pray for this country. I pray for its leadership, that it makes wise decisions in the coming weeks and months. I pray for medical professionals as they continue to seek uh, new treatments and new cures and new uh, uh, ways to be able to take care of people through this crisis. I pray that you will keep them safe, that they will not contract the virus because of their giving. I pray, God, that you will begin to do a work in the hearts and lives of people around us. You'll protect us, protect our first responders, people who are on the front lines, protect people who are the most vulnerable, that you will look out after them. I pray that you will continue to take care of hearts and lives and provide for our financial needs. Lord, some, some people have been laid off. May they find a job. Lord, I pray for people who are struggling through tough times in their business. You will be the provider because you are our provider, not the economy. You're the one who will take care of us, and we look to you to provide for every need. I pray for every person here who has a, a physical ailment, a, a, something in their body that needs healing. I pray for those with cancer. I pray for those who are suffering with COVID. I pray for those who are suffering from other diseases. And no, those are ones that we're praying for, that we will intercede, that we will continue to believe that you're going to do a great work in their lives. 
Lord, I thank you so much for, for what you're going to do. And I pray for healing. I pray for your provision for, for marriages and families, that you build a hedge of protection, not just around this church, but every family, every home, every life that is listening right now. I pray your blessing upon them. They may not know me. They may be just going through and seeing uh, this service on the Internet. I don't care. You visit them where they're at right now and begin to bless them. And we're going to give you the praise and the honor and the glory forever for it, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, hashtag, amen below, uh, or over here on the side. As you take that opportunity, thank you so much for being here. And don't forget, send us those prayer requests. We want to pray for you. Well, Again, thank you so much for being here and being a part of this service today and for joining us. And I want to thank you for your faithfulness in your support and in your giving. Uh, you have continued to help Faith Family Worship Center to remain strong. But we're only about halfway through this. Your faithfulness is, is going to see us through all of this. And I, I, I'll share a little bit more about that here in a few moments. I want to share with you uh, 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 this illustration. A few years ago, at the University of New Hampshire, the librarian donated his entire estate to the university. Now, you may be thinking, <laughs> what, what, how much money can a librarian give a university? How much money could he actually have? Uh, somewhere in the, in the area of $4 million. The man was incredibly frugal with his life and his money. The university, though, generated a lot of criticism whenever they took $1 million of that $4 million to build a new scoreboard for the uh, football stadium. And then they only donated $100,000 to the library. Yeah, that does seem a little bit backwards to me, too. Reasons like this is why people don't like to give, because they're afraid their money is going to be used unwisely. Now, I can't promise you that every project and every event and everything we do is always going to be a home run. You, you can't make those kind of promises for yourself either. But I can tell you that we know that, that what, how you support us and, and the way that you're, support, you're supporting us, it, it, we don't look at it as our money. We look at it as God's money. And that we want to do everything that we can to see lives changed as a result of what we do whether we're here digitally, uh, virtually, here on the internet, physically, as whatever the case is, we want to be able to see lives transformed by the power of God. And if there's anything that's happened during the course of the last few weeks, it's recognizing that the fact that God is everywhere all the time. We made some assumptions in ourselves that God could only move if we were here in a sanctuary on Sunday morning, or God could only move if we had a small group in a room and, and, and over here off to the side, or whatever the case is. But God has been moving in our hearts and our lives, even though we are not physically together. God has never left us. He's never given up on us. And we are managers of what he has given us. You're a manager of everything that God gives you, and he gives you everything. And through this crisis, we have kept Faith Family Worship Center strong. Thank you so much for that. We've invested money into this digital platform that we're doing. For example, this week we uh, had to get a new video card for our computer so that we can bring to you quality uh, of video. You'll probably see some differences here in the next couple of weeks as a result of that. But it, it's, it, it takes money in order to be able to do it. And your giving ma is making all the difference in the world. And we are going to continue to invest in every way possible into your family and into your lives in order to see lives transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. So thank you for your giving. And Father, I pray a blessing upon every gift and giver, upon those who tithe, those who give above the tithe, and those who richly bless. Lord, I thank you for what you're going to do, and I pray that you will continue to take care of every need they have as they are obedient in giving to you. And we thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, 10% of this offering today, we're going to be sending to Davy Teen Challenge Women's Home in Davy, Florida. 
a longtime partner of Faith Family Worship Center for the last 25 years. We have enjoyed and been a blessing to their ministry. But during this time, they don't have any services, and they're struggling. And so we are going to send them an offering this week. So we are going to tithe 10% off of our offering to be a mission, a blessing to somebody else. And if you want to give above and beyond that to them, mark uh, something above your regular offering. You want to give above that, just mark it missions. And we will give that to them. It's, going to be, it's, a, it's an honor to be a blessing to those who serve in the kingdom of God. And we want to give you the opportunity to be able to join along with us in order to be able to do that. Well, here are a few things that are coming up here at Faith Family Worship Center. And if you give just one minute of your attention here, I will be right back and I have a big announcement for you. Thank you for your attention to those particular announcements, but what's the big thing? Well, we're reopening our physical campus here in Palm City. Now, according to the governor's orders, we're doing so at 25% capacity. Well, that's uh, going to make life a little more interesting for us to be able to accomplish this, but we are going to go ahead and take a step of faith and move forward. First of all, we are going to offer an 8 and a 10.30 service, 8 a.m. and 10.30. You will need to go to ffwc.us forward slash services in order to be able to, to reserve your seat. Reservations will get preferred seating. If we have any room afterwards and you come, we will make that accommodation. But we have a number and we have to cut it off at that particular point. And it's going to be a little bit different you, there you can go to our Facebook page at uh, Faith Family Worship Center. There we have posted all of the details of everything that's going on. And we sent an email to many of you. You may want to go back and see uh, if you receive that email and that information. If not, let us know. But we encourage you to, if you want to, to be able to come. Eight, and then Faith Skills will be at 9.15 a.m. Now we're going to be doing a hybrid class. That means those physically here and those who join via Zoom. So if you can't make it here physically, you can still join us online via Zoom. And then at 10.30 a.m. And this service will still be broadcast at 10.30 a.m. We are not going to stop providing this uh, uh, opportunity to be blessed to you here, uh, here on uh, ffwc.live. So we need you to make those reservations. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask us. And then one of the things that have already come up is, well, should I or should I not come? If you're high risk, then we suggest that you take some time before you return and continue to be blessed through our digital campus. But if you feel comfortable and you want to come to be a part of this service, you're more than welcome to do so. And as the governor begins to allow things to begin to increase in capacity and size, we are going to correspond accordingly with it. Obviously, there will be some changes. A few things are going to be different. But we will have the opportunity to worship together here next Sunday, May 17th, 8 a.m. or 10.30 a.m. Make sure that you fill out your reservation as soon as possible, and we will be able to uh, have your seat ready for you on that Sunday. Now, as I announced earlier, today is Mother's Day. I ran across this video that um, uh, it, it, it's a bit humorous, but uh, I thought this was great, and I want to share it with you right now. Take a cup out about a minute or two, 
and focus your attention on this and then ask yourself the question, don't you wish you could give one of these to your kids? Well, it's finally happened. You've moved out. You're on your own. Congratulations. But everyone still needs a little help sometimes. Mom, have you seen my wallet? It's in your back pocket. No, I checked there. Your other back pocket, dear. Ah, thanks, Mom. Introducing the Mom Personal Assistant, the only smart speaker device with all the wisdom, caring, and sage advice of a mother. Mom, please call Brad. Honey, I'm just not sure he's right for you. Just call him. Okay, calling Ryan. No, Mom, I said call Brad. Trust me. The Mom PA always has your best interests in mind. Wish me luck, Mom. Big interview today. Did you eat breakfast? Uh... Is that what you're wearing? Wait, what? <laughs> Did you even shower? She's there to provide a helping hand whenever you need it. Mom, set a timer for 40 minutes. Mom? The Mom Personal Assistant won't function until you say the magic word. Oh, right. Mom, please set a timer for 40 minutes. Sure thing, hon, but it's only 30 minutes for that dish. The Mom PA is always correct and basically knows everything. Mom, what setting should I use for this laundry? Mom, do you think I should color my hair? Hey, Mom, can you please order mac and cheese? You still have two boxes. What? No, we're out. Did you look? Yeah, I just looked. It's gone. Do you want me to look? Uh, no, no, it's okay. I'll go look again. Try looking with your eyes this time. Based on God's perfect design, the mom personal assistant is thoughtful, kind, encouraging, and supportive. You are beautiful. It's okay. You're gonna get through this. I am so proud of you. You can change the world. But right now, hon, you really need to change your socks because they smell like a dumpster. Ugh, mom. The mom personal assistant. Always helpful, always reliable, and always there for you. Well, how many of you mothers out there wish you could have gave one of these to your kids whenever they left college or whenever they left home? <laughs> I tell you what, that was, uh, uh, that was great. And if somebody invents one of these, uh, maybe you just want one in your house for your kids whenever they get home before you do or just put it in their room so they just get dressed properly before they walk out and you have to send them back in and do it again. Well, we want to extend all of our love and our appreciations to moms. Mom, motherhood is something God created. That's why we are so adamant about encouraging motherhood, being to all of our moms and our dads. Father's Day's coming, and guys, we'll spend some time together here doing, taking care of business then. But for today, it's mom. And if you have an opportunity to call your mom today, visit your mom today, please do so and make sure that you do that. And I want to say how much I love my mom and how much that I appreciate her to be a part of my life. She has uh, always been a part of my life, even though at one point in our lives we were almost 3,000 miles apart from each other. But yet, we are here together, and I love her very much, and I want to extend my love for the whole world to be able to hear that I love my mom, and uh, I want her to be a part of my life. Now, there's something that's going to happen in the comments now because we have a number of gifts to give away. And so our digital hostess or usher is going to ask some questions. And according to those responses, questions like, who's the youngest mom here? Or who has the most kids? Or do we have any great grandmothers here? And how many kids do you have? So we're just going to ask some of those questions. And th those, to those youngest moms and those who have the most kids, we have a special gift that we're going to send to you. And... We are sending a gift of jewelry to every mom. It does not matter where you are at in the world. We will send it to you. We want to give this to you as a token of our appreciation and love for you and saying thank you for being a mom. And so if you will make sure that we know you're here and that we have your information by going new to FFWC at 77948, it will be deeply appreciated. And we are wanting to honor you and thank you. And remember, we're going to have that big drawing at the end of the service. Well, we come to the fourth week of Finding Hope. And I want to thank you for being here with me through this series. 
I can honestly tell you this is the first series of messages I have ever uh, uh, ministered to with just a camera right here in front of me. I know you're there. Um, I actually have a little note right above the camera to remind me you're there. And I thank you for being there and being a part of what's happening. And in the Gospels, Jesus revealed his supernatural miracle working power that is able to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or imagine. In other words, there is something about following Jesus that will just blow your mind if you want to have the faith and trust in him in order to see that happen. Jesus is compelled by his love and compassion to, uh, uh, to heal the blind and the deaf, to heal the sick, the terminally ill, the disabled. He calmed storms, he cast out demons, he even raised the dead. And we may think, man, that was great and wonderful then, but he makes it very clear that everything, everything, you may say that to yourself, everything is possible to God. What would it be like if all of these things were to happen today? Good news, it does. Miracles are still happening today. Jesus promised that he could do, we could do what he did. And we want to see that in your life. Of the 37 miracles that are mentioned in the Gospels, apart from the resurrection of Jesus, the one I'm about to share with you appears in all four Gospels. It's the only one that appears in all four Gospels. In John chapter 3, verses 1 through 13, after this, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing uh, on the sick. Jesus went up the mountain. There he sat with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then and seeing that the large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, where are we going to buy bread so that these people may eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he could do. That is a very important part of that passage right there. Philip answered him, 200 denarii worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon, and brother, Peter's brother said to him, there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they for so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down, about 5,000 in number. Jesus then took the loaves. When he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated. So also the fish. And after they had as much as they wanted, and then they had eaten their fill, he told the disciples, gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and they filled 12 baskets of fragments from the barley loaves, five barley loaves left by those who had eaten. I would have loved to have seen that. Just a handful of food feeding 12,000 people. That's a lot of people to feed with so little. But this reveals so much about the power and authority that Jesus has and his heart for you. Number one, Jesus already knows your need. He already knows your need. John 5, 6, lifting up his eyes then, he's seeing a large crowd coming towards him. Jesus said to Philip, where are we to buy bread that these people may eat? Now, no, it says there are 5,000 men. That's all they counted. If you bring in the women and the children, conservatively, people estimate the crowd to be about 12,000 people. That's a great need. If somebody came to you and says, we have 12,000 people, you got 30 minutes, you need to come up with something to eat. You would say, hmm, I've got a great need here. Or you just go running the other way. Especially considering the fact they have no food. It isn't like anybody, any one of them had any food either. Nobody had any food. Now, you may be facing a great need today. You may feel like Philip here, looking out at this need, going, I, 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 hmm. Yeah, you know, you, you, you would be thinking, I don't know how to solve this problem. I don't know what to do about it. I can't, I, this is bigger than me. And, and there are needs in our lives that will just blow our minds. I mean, it just, it'll blow your world up, and you just cannot wrap your brain around it. I get that. I've been there whenever I've been at those particular points. 
But Jesus is neither alarmed nor surprised about the great need. In fact, we see here he was prepared for it. He was ready to meet the need. He saw the great need, but it did not overwhelm him. The disciples were intimidated, but Jesus was at perfect peace. He was fully aware of what was going on and what he was going to have to do. Hell always wants you to focus on the size of your problem so that you will be intimidated and discouraged. Let me say that one more time. Hell always wants you to be focused on the size of your problem so that you will be intimidated and encouraged. Keep your eyes on Jesus. He's your source of hope. Think about it. He sees your broken marriage. He's memorized your medical charts. He knows the balance in your bank accounts. He knows the battle you have with anxiety and depression. He sees your struggle with addiction. He's fully aware of your teenager's lifestyle, and he's not intimidated by any of it. Think about that. Number two, Jesus already has the answer. In John 6, 6, he said this to test him, for he himself knew what he would do. The disciples are trying to figure out how they're going to do this. They don't have Uber Eats. There is no Papa John's delivery. They've got nothing to fall back on in order to solve this problem. But here's the real problem. The disciples are focusing on the problem, and they're forgetting about the one who's standing right beside them. It just never occurred to them that Jesus could do something about this, even though they have seen him do miracles already. Andrew, one of the disciples, speaks up and says, well, I got, a, I got this kid over here, and he's got five little loaves, barley loaves, and two small fish. And then he asks the question, but how far will they go among so many? <laughs> Good question, Andrew, but you are asking from the wrong point of view, but Jesus knew exactly what to do with it. Jesus already has your answer, and he already has everything that you need. Jesus already has your answer, and he already has everything that you need. You say, but I've got so little offer. I, I, I'm, I'm not even as good as five barley loaves and two small fish. Jesus is able to take your life and your circumstances surrounding you, and he can make a miracle out of it. It doesn't matter how small that it is. In fact, sometimes we think smaller is better. Take it, give it to God, all of it, trust him with it. And let's see what he can do. Everyone was fed as much as they wanted. Nobody went hungry. They were like, man, this is the best meal we've had in a long time. But it doesn't stop there. Jesus said, remember, there's infinitely more. He, there was 12 baskets of food left over of the bread. 12 baskets left over. This is important. Jesus meets your needs and he does more. A number of years ago, I was here in this sanctuary doing some work, and there was a knock on the door. This young lady walks in, and she has got a whole slew of paintings. I ask you, where are you from? And she says, Jerusalem. I said, really? Really? She had ID right there. She was from Jerusalem. And she goes, I'm from the Jerusalem School of Art, and I'm here in the United States, and I'm, part of my deal is, is I've got to paint stuff, bring it here, and sell it. And uh, I'm like, okay, well, that's a deal. Fine. What have you got? And so she's going through this. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I'm not buying anything because I'm broke. I've only got $100 to my name. Literally, there's only $100 in my bank account. And I've got to make that last all the way for another four days till I get to the next payday. Times are tough then. So she's going along here, and we're sitting literally right where that camera is at. And we're sitting down there on the floor, and she's going through these beautiful paintings. She was a wonderful artist. She was so proud of them. And I hear the Holy Spirit say to me, buy that painting right there. I'm like, okay. I said, how much is that painting right there? She says, $100. Now, if you're like me, you're now having an argument with the Holy Spirit. And I'm like, Holy Spirit, I've only got $100. This is the last, I've got to make this, I need gas, I need food, I need all the rest of the stuff. I don't, I can't do that. Holy Spirit very graciously says, buy the painting. Okay. So I said, wait just a moment. I get up, I walk back into my office, and I said, here's what the deal is. I explained it to my wife. She looks at me and goes, well, buy the painting. If that's what God wants, do it. 
he, he's going to have to fix the rest of it. So I come out and I'll say, I'll buy that painting right there. And I handed her $100. And then she sits down and she looks at me and he goes, she goes, what is this place? I said, it's a church. And she looks at me and she goes, really? I've never been in a church. I've never seen a church. She goes, would it be okay if I just sat here and look around? And I said, sure, not a problem. And from there, she begins to ask me questions. What do we believe? Why do we believe it? And I was able, I said, could I give you the book of John? And she goes, who's John? And I explain, he's one of Jesus' 12 disciples wrote a book about Jesus. I said, would it be okay if I shared that with you? She goes, yeah, sure. And I signed it. She had me. She wanted me. She wanted me to sign it. And I gave it to her, and she left. It's the last I ever heard of her. Well, here's the painting right there. It's been hanging in my office all these years. Now, the rest of the story. The next day, I go to the mailbox, and inside it is a check for $1,000 from a friend of mine in the Midwest who I only talk to one time a year. And he said, I was praying the other day and God told me to send this to you, that you would need it on this date. I walked into my office, I laid the check down in front of my wife, and I said, you remember that $100? Go, yeah. Well, this just came in the mail. Now, I'm not saying that God tenfold blesses everything. What I am saying is, is when you're obedient to trust him with a little, he's able to do a lot. It doesn't matter if it's your treasure, if it's your time, if it's your testimony, whatever it is. If you will give it, it will be a blessing to you. Number three, Jesus uses those who are ready. I'm sure the boy was just as shocked as anybody to see his food go as far as it did. And the only hope for this world, for you, for me, it's Jesus. And you and I are the ones God chose to share that hope with. You're obedient yes to what God wants you to do could be the yes to somebody else's miracle. I don't know where that wet conversation went that day, but I'm sure the Holy Spirit was in it because whatever he starts, he always finishes. Make yourselves ready by offering your time, by offering yourself, by, by supporting one another without restrictions. Take the governors off. Take the restrictions off your life and see what God can do through you with what he's blessed you with. I wonder, often wonder, if Jesus would have used the small boy's lunch if he'd have said, well, you can have it except give me a loaf of bread and a fish. You can have the rest of it. I don't know if he would have. Let Jesus have the opportunity to supernaturally multiply our lives and our resources to meet the needs of our church, of our city, of everyone around us. Allow him to do that through your lives. Culture wants to convince us that we've got to live close-fisted and we've got to hang on to everything that we have. But the reality is, is that we will have nothing when we open our fists. Jesus shows that when we give all of our love and our time, when we walk with him, we will have infinitely more than we could imagine or ask for. He said in Matthew 29, 16, but Jesus looked at them and said, with man, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. And that's what I want you to experience in your life today. During this crisis, what have you learned about God. What have you learned about him through this? Now, how many miracles have you experienced? You say, oh, I haven't experienced any miracles. I doubt that. Some of them are so small. Look harder. God has been at work in your life, regardless wherever you are, whoever you are. I have no idea who's watching this, but I know my God, and I know that he's been on your side the whole time. But what is your need right now? What are you facing at this moment? Jesus already knows what that need is, and he already has an answer. But we have got to go to him. We're always waiting for him to come to us. He already went to the cross. It's now time for you to make the trip. 
and say, Jesus, here is my life. Here are my problems. I can't fix them. I need your help. What can you do right now? Can you be used of God to help meet the needs of people around you? You can only if you ask. God, use me. I'm here. Use me. That's what he's asking from you today. To open your life and say, here I am. Here are my needs. But I am not going to be so wrapped up and intimidated by those needs that I cannot be useful to you, God. Sometimes we want one thing to happen before we do another, but the reality is our lives will continue with those two facets of our life together. Father, I thank you for what you've done for us, and I pray your Holy Spirit now descend upon every place where this live stream is going. I pray that you will touch hearts and lives. I pray that you will begin to move by your spirit and that we will begin listening to that still small voice in our hearts, which should be the loudest voice in our hearts right now. I pray for people's needs. They're coming before you about their marriage, their family, their finances, their future, their fears. Lord, I pray that you will begin to do a work within them that they will give those needs to you like a little boy with five little loaves of bread and two little fish. They'll just give it to you. Don't know what you can do with it, Jesus, but if you could take that little bit and feed 12,000, I've got a pretty good idea. You can do something great in my life. And I pray that you'll meet them at their point of need right now. God, help me to give hope to somebody this week. Help me to be one who gives and, be, and, and says yes to you to changing somebody's life. Use me to reach people. Help me to give away my heart, my faith to others that are around you. That I can do so much infinitely more than I can think or ask. I pray God that we will have an infusion of faith that will open our eyes to see what you see. The world is open and ready to hear your name and let us proclaim it loud for all to hear. Jesus is our hope. Well, if that's you here today and you say, yes, pastor, man, that's me. I raise my hand. Hashtag I raise my hand. Put that there in the comments right now. Count on me. Count on me to give my needs to God and trust him. Count on me to be a voice of hope at work, in my neighborhood, to my family, to those around him. Count on me to be able to do that. Hashtag I raise my hand. I would love to see how many people will step up like a little boy with a little bit of lunch and say, here, Jesus, I don't know what you can do with it, but it's yours. Let's go. Take that step of faith today and do just exactly that. Remember, speak hope into people's lives. Sing hope. You say, I can't carry a tune. Well, just sing the praises of God of all the wonderful things he's done for you and be hope to somebody this week. Let them know there is hope and his name is Jesus. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. God bless you. Have a great week.